Hmm. And please I'm an owner. remember to turn uh, to mute your mics. So only David and I will have open mics, okay? There should be a red microphone at the bottom uh, corner of your screen if you are muted. Yep, that's how you can tell. Okay, so we will begin worship with this song, Come and Fill Our Hearts, and we will sing three times through, and David will lead us. call to worship, young or old, slow or fast, tall or small, know-it-alls or eager learners. Wonder of wonders, God has called each of us here. Wrinkled, white-haired, stooped with age, bright-eyed, smooth-skinned, leapers of two steps at a time. Wonder of wonders, each of us is made in God's image. Parents volunteering at school, kids playing tag, workers stocking shelves, retirees walking in the park. Wonder of wonders, God works through each of us. And we move into a prayer um, asking for a, a prayer of confession. David, would you lead us? How foolish we are to think we can hide our failings from you, seeing God. We treat our bodies as trash cans for junk food, not as sanctuaries for your spirit. We get drunk on the seductions of our society while daintily sipping at your living water. We doze under the tree of temptation hoping you won't see us and expect us to get up and follow Jesus. Forgive us our heart's only hope. In your mercy, silence our pride. In your compassion, lift our burden of guilt. In your grace, mend our brokenness. In your love, redeem our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In front of us, behind us, to our right and to our lo left, look, God is there. In our past, beside us today, waiting in the future, look, God is there. In the shadows, in the light, look, God is there. From the top of the mountains to the bottom of the seas, in the morning, in the evening, in every moment, God is with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our reading for this evening comes from the Gospel of John. And uh, right in the first chapter, beginning at verse 35. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, 
and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter, which means rock. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God descending and ascending upon the son of man. The gospel of the Lord. So this week, the gospel story moves from the baptism of Jesus into the calling of his disciples. And we get two different versions of that event. This week, we hear John's version. And next week, we're going to hear Mark's version. Um, what is interesting about John's version, or one of the things that's interesting about it, is that the text refers to five different places. It actually begins near the Jordan River in the wilderness of Judea, where John the Baptist is having his, um, his ministry of baptism. That's where it starts. And then it moves to the region of Galilee. None of these are very far apart. You can drive from along the Jordan River, it's a couple hours. Um, Anyway, so there's Judea, there's Galilee, there's references to the village of Bethsaida, the village of Nazareth, there's under the fig tree is also a place, if you wish, and um, there's a reference to heaven. So there are references to different places, and we see Jesus coming from and going to a lot of different places. He doesn't stay still. He's moving around. And Jesus sees people in different places, in various places. And if we pay attention, we ought to be able to see Jesus in the different places where we go in our daily lives. And so that's one of the things that for us to think about where and how do we see Jesus um, present in the different places where we live out our lives. That might be a little bit more challenging to ask that question for us these days when a great many of us work from home, um, 
and our travels, if you will, have become more limited since we tend to stay home much more um, and maybe don't go out as much for walks and things like that um, in the cold weather. So that's one, one kind of uh, avenue uh, theme that we find in this text. Another one is that Jesus seeks out, and this is important for us, I think, Jesus seeks out his disciples. And he finds not one, not even two, but four, and eventually more. And if you notice how Jesus gathers these disciples, it's, it's all like a chain reaction and it's all built around relationships. So John the Baptist is standing with two of his disciples. So there's a relationship right there. Those two disciples are, are disciples, they're learners, they're followers of John the Baptist. John says, look, here is the Lamb of God. And they immediately start following Jesus and they spend some time with him. And it turns out that one of those disciples was Andrew. And Andrew went to get his brother, whose name was Simon. And that's the Simon that we know as Simon Peter eventually becomes the um, leader of the disciples. And then, so they kind of are pointed to Jesus by John the Baptist, who is Jesus' cousin. So there's, there's lots of relationship stuff going on. And then when Jesus decides to go to Galilee, he finds Philip. And it's interesting because Philip is from the same village, Bethsaida, as Andrew and Peter. I wonder if they knew each other. And then Philip goes and finds Nathaniel and tells him. So the entire um, Jesus movement in its very beginnings is really built around these, what we would think of as natural relationships relationships of um, kin, relationships of friendship. And of course that tells us that Jesus is not really so much interested in solo spirituality, right? Um, he builds a movement, he builds a group, um, a community, that's what Jesus is about. Um, and he, Jesus does that because he knows that we need one another. We need good company and we need friends. And one of our commentators points out that in the ancient world, uh, the philosopher, the Greek philosopher Aristotle described friends. This is how you know who your real friends are, right? Because friends are those people who help you to be wise and virtuous. The early Christian father Augustine, Bishop of Hippo, described friendship as one way to help each other to love God. So that's what friendship is supposed to be about. And so Jesus, when he calls people to follow him, he calls us into relationships, into friendships. Um, and notice that throughout, there isn't any high pressure pitch. It's all a very simple person to person invitation, come and see. Just come and see, because we found this really cool guy or we're doing this really cool thing. At St. Stephen's, we might ask people to come and see our garden or to come and see some other thing that we're doing that is really cool. So those are just a few thoughts around how Jesus builds a community. 
and where he's going with them. Okay. So as we let that sink in, we will sing this song, Be Thou My Vision. Let us pray. It doesn't matter how far we go to run from you, God who calls us. You reach out and touch us with healing in your hands. Turn us around so we can follow you home. It doesn't matter how suspicious we are of you, God who invites us to follow. In your compassion, you accept us where we are. Take away our fears and our doubts. It doesn't matter how often we ignore your words, God who speaks to us. You whisper to us in anticipation until our ears tingle. Open our ears to hear you and give us the patience to listen. God in community, holy in one, Continue to call us by name, even as we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And I just want to share with you this blessing from Jan Richardson, which I think is appropriate for this season of Epiphany. Perhaps it does not begin. Perhaps it is always. Perhaps it takes a lifetime to open our eyes, to learn to see what has forever shimmered in front of us, the luminous line of the map in the dark, 
the vigil flame in the house of the heart. The love so searing we cannot keep from singing, from crying out in testimony and praise. Perhaps this day will be the mountain over which the dawn breaks. Perhaps we will turn our face toward it, toward what has been always. Perhaps our eyes will finally open in ancient recognition, willingly dazzled, illuminated at last. Perhaps this day, the light begins in us. And let us sing, Lord, be glorified. Go in peace to know, live, and share Christ. Thanks be to God. Woohoo! <laughs> yes, woohoo indeed. <laughs>